Hello, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I am the owner of scienceinhydroponics.com and today we're going to be doing an unboxing video where we will be looking at this potassium ion selective electrode. So we're going to open the box, we are going to calibrate it, we are going to see what's in there and then we're going to perform a measurement of a hydroponic solution, see what we get. Let's go. Okay. So the objective of this ion selective electrode is to allow us to measure potassium in a hydroponic solution or in any solution within a certain concentration range. So let's unbox this and see what we are getting. So first of all, we are getting the um, electronic unit and this is where the ion selective electrode actually is, which is this part here. I'm gonna set this apart for the moment. We also get this case, which is the case where we will store the electrode after we assemble it. And inside this case, you can see here, we have the calibrating solutions. We have two to perform a double point calibration. And then we have uh, the syringe that we can use for samples and the space for our electrode. We also have these small a sample holder that we can use for samples that are of too little volume, like when you do SAP analysis or things like that. And this is the case. And we have the instruction manuals, which tell us everything we want to know about the electrode in Japanese and in English. And we have this uh, small guide, which is just like a quick start guide that is also laminated so that you can have it while you work and you can use this as a reference, for example, to perform the two-point calibration process that we will be performing um, shortly. Okay, now let me set this apart. Okay, now let's perform the actual assembly of the electrode. So once you open this box, you see here the instructions. So we have the electrode assembly and inside this box we have the two uh, batteries and we have the oh, the uh, electronic unit. So to assemble this you take the two batteries and you put them in with the negative face down so they're in now and let's open this this now this has a little thing here for easy opening and this is the electrode assembly and you can just make sure these letters make sure these letters are facing the same way and then you can just plug that in and this should just turn on now. You can see, turns on. Okay, now let's perform, we're gonna now, we're gonna perform the calibration process now. So you switch it on, then we're gonna use distilled water to wash the sensor receptacle. Then I'm gonna use a paper towel to tap this very lightly to ensure there's there is no remaining solution there. Now I'm gonna take the 150 ppm solution. And what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna put a little bit, dump it, a little bit, dump it, a little bit, and dump it. And then finally, I'm gonna put enough to fully cover the sensor. Now I am going to close this and I'm going to hit the calibration button. 50 and I hit it again. And now it's steady and it measures 150. And we saw the happy face there. So we're done with the first point of the calibration. Okay, now for the second calibration point, I'm going to Clean again with distilled water. Now again, I'm gonna gently tap the electrode to get rid of 
as much of these uh, droplets as I can. Now I am going to close the 150 and I'm gonna get the 2000 ppm solution. Gonna open it and then I am going to do the same thing I did last time. Squirt a little bit, dump it, little bit, dump it, little bit, dump it. And then for the last one, I am going to fully cover the electrode assembly. Make sure there's no bubbles. I'm gonna cover this and I hit calibrate. It's at 2000, hit calibrate, and now it should change to 2000. And now we need to wait till there's a happy face again. There. So now the calibration process has been fully completed with the two solutions. So it's important to do the two point calibration to maximize the accuracy and to perform it as I showed you where you clean and then you purge so that you can get the maximum possible effectiveness. Now we're going to put this calibration solution away and we're going to measure a problem solution. So we have here a solution that I prepared from a hydroponic fertilizer and now I'm going to measure its concentration using the electrode, its potassium concentration. In theory it should be around 85 ppm according to the manufacturer so we'll see what the concentration of this fertilizer actually is in potassium. So I'm going to perch this beaker first. Now I'm going to use the syringe that comes with the electrode in order to measure. So I'm going to perch this two, three, now using the solution, I am going to do the same thing that we did with the calibration solution where I'm going to dump three times. And then this is the one, make sure you fully cover the area of the sensor. Now we should wait. So this is telling us we have 100 ppm of potassium. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, since this is an electrochemical measurement and this uh, ion selective electrode needs to be in, in equilibrium to give us adequate readings, I am going to repeat the measurement again to see how accurate, uh, how precise the measurement is. Uh, you with these electrodes I advise you always do your measurements more than once so that if for any reason you had a big error in one of your measurements you don't end up taking that one. So it is stabilizing we don't have any happy face yet and there we go we have a hundred ppms again. So this is uh, showing to be pretty stable. So I'm going to just do it once again to see if we are uh, really that stable. Close it again. And we have 100 ppm again and we've measured three times so we know this is going to be pretty accurate. So the error of the sensor is going to be plus or minus 10%. So that is what uh, we would expect from it. So the manufacturer probably put a little bit more potassium in the fertilizer than it says on the label, which is pretty normal, even that they want to guarantee that they're always above the, the analysis. So after finishing with your uh, ion selective electrode measurement, you need to do the same thing, wash with distilled water. These electrodes are supposed to be stored dry, so you want to tap this very gently, uh, close it, and then to turn it off, you just press the on off button, and that's it. So in order to store this, you will store your two calibrating solutions here. You store your electrode here. And uh, I am going to 
just make sure when whenever you use the the syringe that you that you later purge it with distilled water so that you don't uh, carry anything from past measurements into your future measurements. So I just purged it with distilled water, put it here, and there we go. So now you will store the electrode like this. You really will not need the box for anything except to keep the manuals, but uh, this is the this is very portable and it's a very neat way to carry them. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video where we looked at this potassium ion selective electrode that you can use to measure the amount of potassium in your hydroponic solutions with an error of plus or minus 10%. Uh, it can also measure a range between four and 10,000 ppms. So it's very useful in hydroponics because we are always within that range. We're always below say 500, but this is very useful if you want to measure or track uh, the amount of potassium in your hydroponic solutions, either when you have recirculating systems or if you have a drain to waste system to track the difference between your input and your output to, for example, do things like uh, a saturated media extract analysis, very useful. They can also be very useful to do other things like tissue and sap analysis, which we will cover in future videos. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. <laughs> Bye.